Well, good morning. Thanks so much for having me here again. My name is Dave Fox, uh, manager with Raftelis. Uh, my office is in Natick, Massachusetts. Uh, we are, again, we've spoken before, but just a, a brief overview. Uh, Raftelis is the largest firm in the country focusing on water, sewer, stormwater, financial rate, and pricing management consulting services for uh, municipalities, for the most part, some private companies as well. Um, uh, it's been quite some time since I, I was here last uh, speaking with you, and it, it sounds like we're trying to re reinvigorate this, uh, these efforts again, so I'm excited. Uh, I thought when I got here that all these people that were packing this room were for me, but uh, it turned out that's not the case. So, um, it's not uncommon for water and sewer discussions. Um, I have a, a brief presentation, and then I think uh, get into more of discussion. Um, I, you're not being asked, I do not believe, uh, to make a, uh, a decision today on anything. This is for informational purposes only. You can ask questions and I can provide you with additional data um, or analyses if need be to help you make a, a, an informed policy decision. So um, what I briefly want to go over to today is just uh, you know, a quick overview of what we've done th uh, to this point. Um, to this point. You know, there's been a little bit of a gap between when we presented last. There's a lot of information thrown at you um, at that time. We were asked, you know, asked you to make some policy decisions based on that. You asked for some additional information, which is going to be provided to you today, or an, uh, an additional option. Um, and then uh, we can talk about what that option is, the different impacts, and what the, the impl implications of making a decision may be. So, just to give you a brief overview of where we are. Uh, a while ago, we did a very detailed billing data review. We looked at uh, all of your bills for, for multiple years for every customer in your system to understand how your customers are using water, when they're using water, uh, who those customers are, how many of those customers you have. Um, go through and did a distribution analysis to understand how they're falling within the different tiers that you have, things like that. Um, we also work very closely with the water and sewer departments to establish financial uh, plans, understanding how much money uh, you are spending today on water and sewer funds um, and what that is going to look like next year, five years from now, potentially 10 years from now. Things get a little fuzzy out there, but we want to be able to start planning for that today. If we don't start planning for it today, um, you know, we're going to uh, be in a, in a bad position. And then project rate increases over that period of time. And that's where, if you remember correctly from last time, we gave you a lot of options of phasing in those increases because we'll talk about in, in just a slide. There's a, a severe inequity right now or uh, between the amount of revenue you're bringing in from water and sewer rates directly versus how much you're spending. Um, being a, there, a lot of that money is coming from taxes rather than the actual user charges from the water and sewer. So how do we, how do we, how do we bridge that gap? Um, and I gave you a bunch of different options of uh, you know, ripping the Band-Aid off. I think you remember me saying and getting there in all one fell swoop and that's gonna uh, require some significant increases and, and I think everybody's heads exploded a little bit when, when I said those and I'll, I'll uh, review those numbers again. And then it gave you, you know, a five-year phase in where we're slowly getting the financial sufficiency in a 10-year phase in as well. We're getting there a little bit slower. Um, one of the options that I did not present last time that, that got brought up was pulling the, the debt piece out. So there's a revenue requirement, there's a total revenue requirement of both the water and sewer funds of how much you need to recover every year to maintain operations so these gentlemen can do their jobs and, and continue to do their jobs well. Um, <coughs> Part of that is, is, is existing debt service and potentially future debt service to uh, finance that capital. Um, although not the norm in the industry, one way of, if you're going to have a split between user charge revenues and tax-based revenues, the typical split is to pull out the capital side of things, most times debt service, and have that be financed out of the taxes with the rest, your operating expenses, uh, other miscellaneous expenses coming from your user charges. So that's an option that I'm gonna present here um, to you today. And, and I did that over a 10 year period, because uh, that was the, uh, this board. Uh, it looked like the 10 year was where we were gonna go, but um, obviously I can provide you with any additional information as necessary. Um, we're gonna talk about what the customer impacts would be under those scenarios between looking at your typical residential customer and the largest customer you have here in Seabrook and how those, those difference, uh, differences between those impacts are going to you know, um, impact those different customers. Um, and then you know, we're trying to present and, and get some final deliverables to you, but we obviously need some policy decisions from this group uh, as to how you wanna move forward. Um, I can present you with all the information and the data. 
necessary for you to make an informed policy decision, but I don't live here in Seabrook. Uh, I don't sit on this board. Uh, you're gonna be, have to be the ones that have to live with that decision into the future. So uh, I'd like to just pr provide you with all the data necessary to answer any of your questions. So hopefully you, you all can make a uh, sound policy decision. Um, so we'll start going through the presentation a little bit now. Uh, this is a current financial situation based on fiscal year 2017. You can see the inequity there between the amount of uh, the first two bars on the left, your water revenues, the amount that you brought in in terms of water revenues from user charges, water and, and small amount from miscellaneous, you know, uh, $858,000. Your total revenue requirements in fiscal 17 is the amount you needed to, to run your system was uh, about double that. Uh, the remainder is coming from taxes. Um, and so, and then uh, it's even worse situation there on the sewer. Um, the, the, the question then becomes, how do we bridge that gap? How do we get from, uh, how do we get both of those, those bars on both the water and sewer side to equate, become equal? So you're recovering the exact same amount that you're spending, but from sewer, uh, water and, and sewer charges. Um, well, one question is, should you do that? Should you bridge that gap or should you maybe uh, narrow that gap a little bit by not having as much coming, uh, by recovering maybe some of the debt service, which is about $660,000, $700,000 annually. Have, pick that up in taxes and how the rest come from the uh, water and sewer rates. Um, just to give you an idea here, in order to bridge that gap, if we wanted to do that in all one fell swoop, you need about an 87% increase uh, in your revenues on the water side and a 197% increase on sewer. Combined, that's a 130, yeah, about 130% increase um, between the two funds. If you were to remove that debt service, it would bring that 130% necessary increase to about, about an 85% increase. Um, and that $700,000 that's in debt service would then uh, be picked up like it is now, really, through the, through the tax base. Um, but that's, that's one year. You know, that's, that's the Band-Aid approach. And again, I realize that was an unpalatable situation, so that's why we broke things out into phase-ins over the five, 10-year period. Is there a question that we want to address now? No? OK. Um, here are your existing rates. Um, you know what your rates are. Uh, we don't need to go through this in detail. The, the one thing that I will point out, uh, because we were asked to run some scenarios where we were uh, attempting to limit the impact on low volume customers or even your typical residential customer. Um, and if we, we need to recover a certain amount of revenue and we're not, you know, say at 85% across the board increase, just to uh, use that um, as an example, we need to recover 85% more revenue, but we don't want to recover, you know, we don't want to have an 85% increase on our typical residential customer or low volume residential customer. That amount needs to get picked up somewhere. You know, somebody has to pay for that. Um, and really that's your, your high volume customers. Um, and so what I wanted to point out is your, your high volume customers, uh, the differential they're paying on their volumetric rates is already uh, fairly substantial. And that, that would just be exacerbated if we were to choose one of those options where we're even further subsidizing low volume and typical residential customers on the backs of the high volume customers. It's the only reason this slide is here, so you're under, you're, you understand that. Um, so again, you know, very competing pricing objectives. You know, we're trying to establish revenue sufficiency, full revenue sufficiency, or potential slightly less than revenue sufficiency, again, if we pick up the capital or the debt service and the tax base, while at the same time recognizing um, that we're trying to keep water and sewer rates affordable for your, your customers. Um, I have a slide later in the presentation that speaks to affordability a little bit um, and where your, your current bills are falling right now in comparison to other communities, um, both in, in New Hampshire as well as uh, across the country. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, our financial sufficiency options, again, you know, I, I presented you with that Band-Aid approach that you know, 130% across the board increase, <coughs> excuse me, um, that's, that's getting there in one fell swoop. Um, a five-year option and a 10-year option. Based on the feedback that I received the last time I was here, that 10-year phase didn't seem like it was the most palatable of options. It starts moving you in the right direction. You know, I, I think if you remember what I said last time, uh, it's important just to start doing something. You know, even if it's gonna take you 10 years, do something today rather than you know, waiting another year, waiting another year, just, that makes the situation worse and worse. Um, stop kicking the can down the road, let's start making, making that transition, and if, it ha you know, if, it, if right now we're deciding to do it over 10 years, that's fine. It doesn't mean that you can't um, 
you can't change your, your mind in five years uh, if we can maybe speed some things up in the process. Uh, so again, the 10-year phase in option was thought to be the most favorable. Um, and I ran this option that you're about to see where we're recovering the debt service through the taxes rather than the user charge. And again, it's about $700,000. Um, so we had uh, some options rather than just across the board increases. <coughs> excuse me. you remember from last time we, we provided you with some rate options instead of just doing across the board increases and by that I mean uh, maintaining the same rate structure you have today and then just increasing those rates by you know, 10% 20% or 130% um, we can make some structural changes to your rates and one of the things we recommended was uh, having a fixed charge on both the water and sewer uh, both uh, for both water and sewer and to increase that fixed charge by meter size rather than just having it be a, a flat bill right now of, of $30. Um, it would increase by meter size, uh, which is very typical in the water and sewer industry. It's, it's the most typical way of recovering fixed charges by having it increase by meter size, reflecting the additional cost of sort of a four inch meter than a, than a five eighths inch meter. What that does is it recovers, if you, all else equal, if you recover the exact same amount of revenue from that fixed charge, but you structure it in a way where it's uh, increasing by meter size, it's recovering less from your 5 8 inch customers, which your typical residential customers which make up the vast majority of your customer base. Um, you're going to recover less from them, and it, it, it provides a little bit of comfort um, in that regard. We also calculated uh, a different volumetric rate structure where you're going to move away from your two tier or your five tier structure. Uh, inclining block and move to a just a two-tier inclining block rate structure for your your typical uh, your residential customers or your small customers your mom and pop shops things like that and then your larger customers would just have a uniform rate that would just pay uh, one rate per thousand gallons um, and what we did there was we attempted to mimic uh, the same differentials that you you have today and how those customers are being um, are, are being charged differently the larger customers paying more than the smaller customers, but we tried to reflect that on uniform rates. So our, our three rate options that we have here, um, and I'm gonna, if you just, I'm gonna give you a sneak peek here, you're gonna see what the, the different customers, um, the impacts are to those different customers. So our, our scenario one, our status quo, just across the board increases, again, leaving the rate structure the same. Scenario two is we're gonna establish uh, a fixed, uh, a new base charge for, for the, the sewer, utility as well as the water utility and that's going to increase by meter size and then it maintains your existing differentials on the volumetric rates but it's not touch, touch, touching the volumetric rates at all it's just having those two separated fixed charges on the water and sewer fund and then scenario three has the different fixed charges increasing by meter size but it also has the new uh, volumetric rates that I talked about um, so if we skip over here this is our co customer impact forecast uh, 10 year I only have it going out to 2023 again because um, things get a little, little or very gray thereafter. Um, and so what you can see is your, your average or your typical residential customer right now is paying about $41 a quarter. Um, if on that first line, can I just come up here and speak so I can point to this if possible? Or as long as I'll speak loudly so everybody can still hear me. Here's the status quo, our option one um, where we are just doing across the board increases. So you'll notice here's our, our typical residential customer. Here's your largest customer in the system. Under the status quo options, those customers are going up at the same rate. So they're going up at 10.7% every single year. It does not matter. Where things differ is when you start getting into the different scenarios here, the scenarios two and three, where scenarios two, that uh, typical residential customer would rather than going up 10.7%, every single year would go up 8.8%, but your largest customer in your system would rather, rather than going up 10.7%, would go up almost 14% a year, 13.7%. And then that scenario three um, even furthers that, that, uh, that shift to having instead of a 10.7 on the cross the board for your typical residential customer, brings that down to 3.7% increases. And on your largest customer in the system, that would bring it actually up to 15.7%. So it's it's exacerbating that that um, uh, that inequity there to some degree between 
the smallest customers in your system and your, and, and your largest. Um, and, and again, let me point out that this does not include the $700,000 in debt service annually that will still be picked up from the taxes. Can I ask you one question? Sure you can. Um, does this include the 30 charge that we all get charged? Yes, it, it does. So in, 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 in status quo, it includes that $30. In scenario two and three, it includes the new fixed charge, which would replace the $30 <coughs> charge, it would increase by meter size, but it still comes out to in that first year about $30, because it's $15 on the water, $15 on the sewer. But it does include that. This is both fixed and volumetric rates. So again, you know, this would require, if, if we had our uh, our magic ball and we knew exactly what was gonna happen in year 10, you know, year one through year 10, these are the rate increases that would uh, need to happen or the customer impacts that would, need, would be required uh, to reach financial sufficiency in year 10 of the forecast. Now, are things gonna change? Maybe we get there in year nine, maybe it would take year, year 11. Again, things are, are very great, but let's start planning for something today and this is what it would look like. So at the, at the most simplest, uh, of uh, options for you would to have a, a 10 year forecast, a 10 year phase in where you do not change anything in your rate structure or you don't have to do that right away. Doesn't mean that you can't do it in year three of the forecast. You wouldn't do it to start the process. You would just need to increase your rates by 10.7% every year for the next 10 years. Um, a quick slide here on stakeholder outreach. Now I know those are, those sound like very high percentages for necessary, you know, necessary increases on your customers. And, and you're right, they are from a percentage standpoint. But you have to think about, and, and I want you to think about, where you are today. Now, where you are today, um, of 105 communities surveyed in New Hampshire, you are the second lowest water bill out of 105 communities. Out of uh, the 250 so, that top left chart, those are nationwide. Uh, you consistently, you know, uh, for a, a seven and a half thousand gallon customer, um, you're in a, a less than one percentile, which is incredible um, out of 250 respondents. Um, <clears throat> even the, the largest customer in your system are, are, are on this, this chart, you're, you're in the bottom 10th percentile. So uh, your, your water and sewer rates are incredibly low, incredibly low. Uh, mainly because of you know, uh, picking up the vast majority of your revenue requirements from the tax base rather than having them be recovered out of the water and sewer rates. But even if you were to increase your rates to have full financial sufficiency, your, your, your rates would still be very low. Um, typically in the industry, uh, EPA suggests um, if, if your water and sewer bill combined exceeds and this is a very blanket assumption, but it's for simplicity purposes, it's easy to use for this example. Um, if your w annual water and sewer expenses uh, exceed 4% of your, your income, that is considered unaffordable, uh, an unaffordable water and sewer bill on an annual basis. Um, let me come back up here so I can point this out. Um, here on this side, uh, income statistics for New Hampshire by listed by the people per <laughs> household uh, that we made some assumptions as to the annual usage um, based on those that per capita and then we have over here what the existing water and sewer bill is um, and uh, your proposed water and sewer bill um, you can see you're well below our four percent threshold now you're you're less than one percent um, and even if you were to just rip the Band-Aid off and get there in one year, you're still well below the 4%, the maximum only at, at two, uh, a little higher than 2%. So again, this is a very blanket assumption approach to measuring affordability, but uh, it, it's one that is useful. Just the, the point of all this is uh, your, your rates are very low, and I realize we're talking about some significant increases to get you to f financial sufficiency, um, but you know, if you flip back to this, you know, you're, you're talking about 10.7% uh, sounds scary, but it's $4.40. That sounds a little less scary. 10% sounds scary, $4 doesn't sound as scary. I, I realize, um, although I, I do realize that you do have 
economically disadvantaged customers here in Seabrook, and, and $4.40 uh, may push uh, push it over the bubble for them. That, that, that's a, a distinct possibility, and that's something that you have to make a policy decision you know, accordingly. Um, but I, I, I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. Um, and with that being said, I'm going to uh, open it up for discussion and, and a whole bunch of <coughs> questions. So thank you.